on the crowd. One of sunlight, the other moonlight, blend into one. Animals like the white raccoon search for the last piece of food before heading home to sleep. <laughs> Digging with sharp claws, he searches for his favorites. Insects, worms, snails, and even eggs. When satisfied, he will return to his home in the trees and settle in for the night. <laughs> As daytime animals settle down to sleep, the forest comes to life. Hidden amongst the shadows, nocturnal animals emerge from the dark silhouettes of the forest. With a body striped to provide perfect camouflage, a fishing cat appears along the river. These cats love to swim and dive underwater, and they wear a layer of short hair so dense that water cannot get through. It is this layer that will keep them warm and dry, even in chilly waters. Fishing cats are rapidly disappearing due to habitat loss and poaching. They deserve our protection before this quiet hunter disappears. Forever. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the world of the night hunters. Now I've often been asked, how do nocturnal animals survive? Well, all night creatures have unique adaptations for survival in the forest. For example, the owls. Now focus your attention over to my left hand side. Coming down with Derek the trainer, we have Midnight. Midnight is a Malay fish owl, also known as a buffy fish owl. They can be found in Southeast Asia, such as Indonesia, Malaysia, and even here in Singapore. Now it has been said that owls are the quietest raptors in the world when it comes to their flight. Who agrees with me? Who agrees that owls are really quiet when they fly? Put up your hand. A few, a few of you. All right, not bad, not bad. Tell you what, we're going to demonstrate it for all of you. But what I need you to do is to please remain in your seats. We need you to be seated down. Keep your flashes switched off and focus your attention over to midnight. Whenever you're ready, midnight. <laughs> There you go. Now, apart from the screeching, you would not have heard anything else. They are very soft feathers, and this gives them the name, the silent hunters of the night. Now, the reason why they need to be so quiet when they fly is because in the wild, what do these owls hunt for? Can anyone tell me? What do owls hunt for? What do they eat? Shout it out. Mice, exactly. Mice, anything else? Snakes, yes. Yeah. Some of them do eat snakes. Anything else apart from mice and snakes? Rats, that's the correct answer. Mice and rats? They come from the same family, that would be the rodent family. Derek says McDonald's, I'm not sure whether that would work, but yes, mice and rats, they come from the same family, that would be the rodent family. And rodents have a very acute sense of hearing, meaning that they can hear things really well. So in order for these owls to fly down and catch them, they need to be really quiet when doing so. So now it's about time that we say goodbye to our beautiful owl. We have Midnight, the Malay Fish Owl, along with Derek, the trainer. Thank you guys. All right, now ladies and gentlemen, for the next segment, a gentle reminder, please remain seated and above all, no flash photography. A famous hunter from the African continent. These animals possess a keen sense of smell, able to detect carcasses from many miles away.
the largest of the hyena species, this is the spotted hyena. They have powerful jaws able to crush bones, including bones of their lives. And with their excellent digestive systems, they're able to digest their entire food. This includes the skin, teeth, bones, bones, and even the heart. They're able to run for long distances in search of their prey, and this is due to the size of their large hearts. While hunting, they able to take down prey often twice their size. This includes animals such as the buffalo. They live in large groups called clans, with a single female as the leader. Now, many people think that they are part of the canine family due to their dog-like features, but they're actually more closely related to the cats. And speaking of cats, coming up next on the grasslands of Africa will be our very own slender girl, Servo. They resemble a miniature cheetah, except for their relatively short tail. And in a short while, we will have a gorgeous Servo coming out to meet us by the name of Cash. Now, samples they feed mainly on rodents, reptiles, and even small birds. Uh, don't be mistaken, this is not our beautiful servo. This is our beautiful man. His name is Derek. You saw him earlier on with Midnight. Here comes Cash. Right on time. All right, now they have long slender forepaws. This enables them to dig into burrows. And apart from that, they have very powerful hind legs. And this enables them to leap up into the air to catch a low flying bird. And if we're lucky tonight, Cash will show us exactly how that's done. Look at that, eyes on the target. Circling round, building up some momentum. Come on, Cash. Thinking about it. Circling some more. Looking around a little bit. This will be well worth the wait. Round and round she goes. Doing some grooming. All right, circling again. along with Derek, the human being. All right, now if you happen to take a look at the back of Cash's ears, you would have noticed that there are these black and white markings. These are known as ocelli, and they act as a natural deterrent in the wild, as they kind of look like eyes in the dark. As you tour around the night far, you will come across many, sorry, give us a minute. Yes, right, now, all right, all right. Uh, lights, lights, all lights, lights. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we apologize. Just remain in your seats, do not panic. We have a slight situation. Very small missing animal, all right? It is completely harmless. Do not worry, it's not a lion, not a tiger. Help us to check under your seats, inside your bags. If you see anything, give us a shout. We will run over and help you out. Do not try and touch it yourself, okay? Like I said, it is very, yes, yes! Good job, yes! What's that? Nice shoes. Okay, everyone, sit down. She saw nice shoes, okay? She did not see a missing animal. I'll uh, keep checking around, all right, everyone? Firstly, have us call for operations. I'll uh, keep checking around. Who, who's shouting at the back there? Sir, hello. Sir, hi, you in the white shirt. Sit down, please. Sir, sit down. Don't wave at people. Sit down. All right, uh, Carissa. Okay, all right, okay. Um, looks like we need some help at the back, all right? I have to be here on stage. So we need two volunteers from this audience, okay? Now two volunteers, because of the nature of the situation, two people above the age of 18, all right? So two fully sized human beings. Anyone wanna help us out tonight? Okay, you, sir, yes, you, with the Union Jack. All right, coming down. One more, we need one more, one more, lady, lady. Okay, you, man, put your bag 
Okay, girl, coming up. Okay, so make your way to the back. They'll show you what you need to do. Nev, likewise, coming up. Make your way to the back. They'll show you what you need to do, all right? Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we apologize. This is a live show. Woo! Sometimes these things do happen, but we have trained professionals at the back. Everything's going to be fine. And tell you what we'll do for all of you. We have interrupted your show. So because it is the last show, we have a bit of time to play around with. Why don't we do this? We'll secure the animal. We'll bring it out. We'll talk about it for a bit. And then we'll continue the rest of the show. Does it sound good? Yeah, you get a little bonus here tonight. All right. Let me go and check that everything's all right. Oh, my goodness. All right, guys. Everything okay? Let me see. The, the, oh. Oh, oh, no. I'm, I'm sorry, I got mistaken. It's a lot bigger than I thought. Um, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, put your hands together and welcome Maggie! Look at that! Just like I said, so cute and so adorable, right? All right, now. Maggie over here is a Burmese rock python. They are native to Southeast Asia. And believe it or not, Maggie is not fully grown yet. When fully grown, they can reach lengths of up to nine meters long and weigh up to 90 kilograms in weight. All right, let's get to know our volunteers. Hello. Let's get to know you first. Hi, welcome to the Night Safari. What's your name? Bill. Bill, Bill where are you from? Australia. Bill, all the way from Australia. All right, Bill, what I'm gonna do, I will help you support the snake here. Take this hand out. Have a quick feel of Maggie. Tell everybody she's smooth and dry or wet and slimy. Oh, smooth and dry. Smooth and dry, absolutely right. Okay, Bill, you can put your hand back below. Thank you so much. Snakes are actually very smooth and very dry. It's a common misconception that snakes are wet and slimy, and this is due to the natural gloss that they have on their scales. But like Bill said, smooth and dry. All right, Bill, you just chill here for a while, all right? I'm gonna move on, thank you so much. Hello. Welcome to the night safari. What's your name? My name is Hechin. Hechin, is that right? From Korea. Hechin, all the way from Korea! I'm here, Alright, you do not have to move. You don't have to feel anything. Just use your eyes and take a look at the size of Maggie's head. <laughs> she is not scared at all. Alright, now in comparison to this size, how many times do you think she can open up her mouth? Two times? Three times? Four times? Five times? All the way up to about 57 times. Uh, 57 times. 57 times. This is a snake, not a dinosaur, okay? Alright, let's try again. Uh, maybe below 10. Uh, 7. <laughs> 5. 5. 5. five. <laughs> yeah. Apologies, a bit of a cough. Uh, the snakes, they can open up their mouths 4 to 5 times. And for pythons like Maggie over here, what they would do is strike at their prey, constrict around it, and then swallow it whole. So now at this present moment in time, I think our volunteers, you guys look fantastic. So let's take some pictures. Friends and family, get out your phones, get out your cameras. If you have Instagram, remember hashtag Night Safari. Wait for it, wait for it. I'll give you guys my good side. And in three, two, one, let's shift it over to the other side so that everybody else can take a picture. You lucky people, you get to see my other good side. And in three, two, one. Now, as you might have imagined, Maggie over here incredibly heavy. So we have Carissa, she's gonna come out, she's gonna take over. Once she does, both of you let go of Maggie, step back and remain here on stage with me. All right, thank you so much. Come here, Bill. All right, in the meantime, everyone, let's give it up for Derek. We have Carissa, we have Ade, and of course, we have Maggie, the Burmese Rock Python. All right, guys. Good job. I know for a fact that Maggie is incredibly heavy, so well done, both of you. We want to say a big thank you. So from all of us here, we get limited edition night safari badges. There you go, and there you go. Thank you so much. And for my two very brave volunteers, thank you so much, guys. You can be seated. Thank you so much. Now, with the courtesy appearance of Maggie, this will be an excellent time for me to share a conservation message with everyone here. Snakes are one of the many exotic animals that people take out from the wild and bring back home as pets. But these animals are not designed to live in our homes and as a result, they... Ex excuse me? Hi! You saw him earlier on at the start of the show. This is Toffee and Toffee is our white raccoon. Now unfortunately, uh, to raccoons, they are regarded as pests in many countries. This is not entirely their fault. Our towns and cities have come too close to their natural habitat. And as a result of the ever-diminishing forests, they have no choice but to come into our world to feed and to survive. 
So it kind of makes me wonder what it is that we humans throw away that may get their attention. So let's check out what got Toffee's attention over here. Looks like we have some common everyday items that we see littered across the night safari. They also have an excellent sense of touch as well as coordination. And they are native to Southeast Asia and that includes here in Singapore. All right, here they come. Along with Papa Derek. All right, come here, sweetheart. All right, tell you what, I am going to be on Bubbles team tonight. Bubbles, let's do this. Bubbles, go Bubbles. All right, drop it in. It's a bit. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can still win this. Come on, come on, let's do this. Let's do this. All right, give them some encouragement. They're doing a great job. Spreading a very important message. Give it up for Bubbles and Bailey, everyone. All right, come on, Bubbles. Just like the last time. Exactly what you did just now. Just drop it in. Into the bin. Very good. All right, we've got a tea tank, kitchen can, what are plastic bottles, paper carton. But Derek, 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 paper carton. Uh, <laughs> all right, tell you what, we are going to do this instead. So you guys, you're going to help me out. Tell me this paper carton, where does it go? Does it go in with the tea cans? Plastic? Others? environments they call home. What we do makes a difference and it is up to us what difference we want to make. Because the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it for us. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, we had Anne and Rainbow, we have Carissa, we have Midnight, we had Derek, we had Ade, as well as Faz and Liana on Southlights. My name is Kenzie, thank you and good night.